Glory to God. I greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord, I invite you to open your Bible in the Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew 21 it speaks of the triumphant, triumphant entrance of Jesus, Jesus in Jerusalem. Matthew, Matthew chap, chapter 21. We're going to read verse 5, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Matthew 21. First book of the uh, New Testament. Verse 5, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the Bible says the following. <coughs> Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the fall of a donkey. It's now verse 8. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered, he, he had come into Jerusalem. All the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Amen. Uh, we want to s uh, mention two other verses that are in John. John. John, John 12, verse 12 and 13. The next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of plum trees and went to the meet, meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise the Lord. We're thankful because we are once again in your presence because of what you have already done during the period of praises we ask you that you bless your church during the message we pray in the name of Jesus the brethren may sit down
Or to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Say to the daughter of Zion. Tell the daughter of Zion. It was a message that the Lord Jesus sent to the daughter of Zion. To the inhab inhabitants of Jerusalem. To the saved to those that are alive. And it was a celebration. And it was a celebration for the believers, for the saved. In John, when um, on the verses that I mentioned, it speaks of the people that on um, uh, that celebration they mentioned the name of Lazarus. Lazarus was the one who was that died and then resurrected on the back of cover of our uh, songbook. It says that I I was dead. I thought I was alive. Now I'm alive, and with Christ I died. For the world, I'm crucified. For Him, I'm resurrected. My life I hid in Jesus. This is the lyrics of this song. It was a celebration. And in the Feast of Jerusalem, there's always celebration, joy, happiness, praises, glorification. And there's a passage in the Bible that says that the dead they don't praise the Lord. It was not it was not a feast for the dead. It was a feast for the the living and for those that are alive. Because the Lord does not have pleasure in the life of those that die. Because the dead they can praise the Lord. But those who are of us who are alive, we praise the name of the Lord. It was a, a celebration for Christians, for the believers, for those that had assurance of salvation, assurance of eternity. And the people they took notice, they found out that Jesus was on this feast. And my brethren, we are on this month especially, and we heard about it many times. But there's a passage that says, I am don't tire to say the same thing because it is assurance for us. So once again, I'm going to say the same thing. This year of, of 2017, we celebrate 500 years of the Protestant Reformation. This is reason enough for us to celebrate. It is celebrating also 50 years of the birth of our church, Christian Maranatha. And also, reason for us to celebrate so we have two reasons to celebrate and this year also for the Jews is a jubilee year and a few days ago they, s they made a, huge, a big celebration the Jews celebrate, celebrated a feast called Shukot feast of the tents uh, feast of the tabernacles uh, and Feast of the Harvest, and there is a translation amongst the Jews where they do a, um, did a trip to Jerusalem because the place of the celebration of the Lord is in Jerusalem. That's why Jesus, he went to Jerusalem to celebrate there in Jerusalem. And this year, as I have just mentioned, which is a uh, jubilee year for the Jews and us by faith we are also through Abraham by the faith of Abraham uh, blessed 
part of this people, this years of restitution, this year's year of restoration, year of deliverance, and it's also a year of salvation. We have three reasons to rejoice with this feast because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit they are present amongst us. And the word says that in, in order for Jesus to enter into Jerusalem, he entered this day in a different way. It was a feast, and he prepared for that feast. And the text said that his en entrance was triumphant, was glorious, was a majestic entrance, was um, a splendorous entrance. And my brethren, Uh, before entering the, this feast, Jesus asked his, his disciples to do something. And to prepare an animal in order for him to ride on this animal into this uh, feast. And in Jerusalem, when the king, he, he returned to Jerusalem. In Israel, when the king returned for into Jerusalem, sometimes you, he, the king went out to practice his acts of justice. And then, as he returning, he would send a messenger. The messenger would go ahead of, of the king, sounding the trumpet. And he would say, the king is coming, the king is coming. And they ut utilized a word then that was called Maranatha, which meant the same thing. The Lord is coming. And people would get ready for that moment the moment of the return of the king. The, the trumpet is sound and uh, the people were informed and uh, all those that were waiting for justice they rejoiced because their desire of the desire of each one of them was that the king would come and exercise his justice and people would uh, get ready for his arrival. The, the word says and also the historical books of the Jews they they would clean up the path and they would throw branches of several uh, several tree several types of trees and it was a demonstration there of obedience and desire to please the king so the king would come and feel good about being around his um, followers so when we pray uh, their prayer that the Lord taught us come your kingdom the desire of the same is that the king the kingdom of God may come so that the king may come and the bride must be ready for this and the word says my brethren that it this in this celebration of Jerusalem which is uh, a feast that was uh, guided by the Lord was left in the Old Testament as an order in your in this feast you rejoice you your daughter and your servant and, and the foreigner your orphan and the widow so in the feast of the Lord in the feast of Jerusalem in the feast of the Lord Jesus the joy would be for every person everyone would rejoice with the presence of the king in that feast the word says that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem and uh, people they didn't wait for Jesus to enter into Jerusalem they went towards him to meet him and in one of the parables of Jesus it says there, here comes the, the groom and when they announced what did the ch faithful church do you went to meet him. Maranatha, the Lord Jesus comes. And the bride is, and the church is getting ready to meet uh, with Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And my brethren, the Bible says that the people, they, they would put their ropes on the, on the floor. When we speak of, about ropes, we're speaking about salvation. So in order to show that on the path of the king 
as the king was returning to Jerusalem, the results the result would bring salvation. The salvation of those that have been washed and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The salvation of the redeemed, of the saved, of those that loved the arrival of the king more than their own lives. They speak of the branch have been cut and placed on the path. He speaks of the servants that fell on the streets. But they arrived in heaven with, with victory in their hands. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Brethren, they walk, they walk toward Jerusalem, and they didn't deviate from the right or to the left. They remain on the path towards Jerusalem, towards eternity. That's why in the book of Hebrews it's spoken about them, because they were killed, they were stoned, they were tempted. They dressed with uh, skins of sheep and they afflicted and mistreated the church of Ephesus and Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Laodicea. They saw all of those things. And their revelation it speaks of the result of these men and women, valiant and valuable servants of the Lord that place that clothes on the road that fell on the road but arrived in eternity with their victory in their hands and in this month we are celebrating this the life of each one of those brethren the faith that was deposited in their lives through our Savior Jesus Christ because they were being chosen by God to have place in heaven in eternity and later, the Apostle John says, Lord, who are those? Where they come from? Those are the ones that wash their clothes with the blood of the Lamb. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's where, in front of the throne of God. 
And this is the desire of the Lord to bring, him, bring us to His throne, to Jerusalem, to His eternity. In the Bible, murder, Britain says that those men, while they were in this celebration with Jesus, they spread the, the branch and the clothes on the road. And it, the Bible says that the, the crowd, the multitude, there was one that was going ahead of, of the, the crowd, and there, was, there were those that followed. The crowd that went ahead are the crowd of the, the, of the believers that went to eternity, that proclaimed the path of salvation, that said that Jesus, that in Jesus, man will be saved. And that it doesn't come from works, but comes from by grace, because by grace you're saved. It's not from you, it's a gift from God. And those that went ahead, they proclaimed this message. There was those are the messengers from the king. And we as church, we we have to thank to them to celebrate for all those men and women that gave their lives for the love of the gospel so that the word of the Lord would arrive today to each one of us. That's why today is celebration because there's a path that leads us to eternity. And those that followed the crowd that was following, there is a crowd today that is following Jesus towards Jerusalem. And the desire of the Lord is that you who are here with us, you men and women, the, the desire of the Lord is that you follow with this, this group to participate on this feast of the rapture of the church so that you may enter into Jerusalem through the gates and live in the holy, holy city. And the word says, my brethren, that they shouted, saying, Hosanna. And there was a cry. The word Hosanna means, save, Lord, we ask. Save us, Lord. Rescue us. Help us. That was the plea of the crowd. And it says that Hosanna to the son of David. Once a man called Martimaeus, he was sitting by the side of the road. And when Jesus passed from Jericho to Jerusalem, he says, he did that. He said, son of David, Hosanna, save me, we ask you, I ask you, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped there in order to give that man what he was asking, his salvation, and so that he could see again and walk with Jesus towards eternity. And this is the desire of the Lord. Blessed are those who come in, in the name of the Lord. The word blessed means a person that is... The Lord sent Jesus to bless us, to manifest His blessing, His grace, His favor, His mercy over my, over yours, over our lives. And I said, my brethren, uh, it was a, a feast. Jesus was going to a, a celebration. And there's a song that is sang in Brazil that says, it's natural that when Jesus is present, it, it naturally, miracles happen. It's natural that Jesus multiply bread and fish. It's natural to cure, to have fire and revival, renewal and anointing. Those things that are natural in the, li in the life, in the feast of Christians. It's natural when we pray and God begin to speak. It's natural when the lame begin walking and that the blind may see with the power of Jehovah. It is natural. All the things are good, my brother and sister. 
And the song says, and I like to say it. The song says that, and I like to say it. Who doesn't want to, doesn't like to see the Lord operating, to save, cure, deliver? See, uh, the, the blind see and the lame walking with the power of Jehovah. It is natural, it is a feast. And the feast you rejoice is a night is a night of rejoicement. But what is the best of this feast is salvation of souls. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord brought you here tonight, my brother and sister, not only to cure you, not only so you may leave this place walking towards eternity, not only for you to see and that the Lord multiply the resource necessary for your life. This is good. And we like to see it, and I know that you want this for your life. It is natural. But the desire of the Lord is that you walk with this crowd towards Jerusalem. The desire of the Lord is that you enter through the gates. Open the gates. The gates of uh, eternal city because who is the King of glory? The mighty God. This is the mighty God. This is magnificent God, this God of power and power that is calling you so that you may enter with Him in Jerusalem and participate of this great celebration which is the rapture of the church. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Save us God. We ask you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. There was a great movement. There has been a great movement here in this place because our King is present. Because He is curing, He is operating. Blind are seeing. Dead are resurrecting. There is a movement here in you, my brother. You may ask, who is this? Who is doing those things? Who is operating? Who is acting? Who is now speaking with you? Who is touching your life? Who is this?
is this? Who is this? Who is this? Hallelujah. This is the Lord Almighty. This is our Jesus. This is our Savior. This is the Lamb of the Lord that removes sin from the world. This is Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. This is the path. This is the truth. This is the life. This is the one that invites you. This is the one that blesses you. This is the one who prepared a place in eternity for you. People ask, who is this? And somebody answered, this is Jesus. Hallelujah. This is the prophet of Nazareth. You know what means, my brother and sister, prophet of Nazareth? Nazareth? Can any good thing come from Nazareth? People ask this. Naz there's nothing good that comes from Nazareth. Couldn't he have been from another place? Why, why then Nazareth? Um, that was showing the um, insignificance. People think that Jesus is insignificant. Maybe you entered here thinking this. That Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. But he entered here and stir everything. Whatever he passed by, he cured, he delivered. He gave sight to the blind and multiplied bread and fish. Whatever he passed by, he brought peace, comfort, refresh, refreshing and joy, salvation and deliverance. This is the prophet of Nazareth. This is the one that was being written about in Isaiah, the one that was despised, the most unworthy of all men. This is a man of pain, experienced in works. Man with um, the man hide their face. This is one, one that was despised. This is the one that people didn't care about. This is the one that was sold by thirty coins of silver. This is the one that was exchanged by Barabbas. But this is the one for you, my brother and sister, who came here to the house of the Lord. For you who are invited to be on this feast, I want to tell you, you, my brother and sister, that this is the one who took upon himself your sicknesses. This is the one who cures your soul tonight. This one is touching your heart to remove any affliction, every pain, every bitterness, every every suffering. This is the one that carries our sicknesses. This is the one that was wounded, afflicted by God and oppressed. This is the one that, because of our transactions. He was wounded and he was crushed by our iniquities. He is the one that brings peace to us. But in order for for him to bring peace to us, he suffered the, the punishment. He did this for love for you and for me. Because we are we're worthy of death. He is the one that once again is blessing us with his grace, with his favor, with his love, with his mercy. He is the one that forgives our sins. He is the one that placed my name on the book, wrote my name on the book of life. He is the one who prepared a place for me in heaven, a feast in eternity. This is the one who is speaking with you tonight, the prophet of Nazareth. This is Jesus, Ye Yeshua, the God with us, the Savior of the world that is inviting you to follow him towards Jerusalem so that you, will, you may participate on this celebration that will be eternal. We will be with him in eternity. The Lord has shown that there is a man that is suffering uh, 
with an illness, and it's also shown shown a, a woman that lost her faith. And the Bible says that by faith they were victorious against kingdoms and closed the mouth of the lions. Cannot uh, lose the faith in the Lord. We're going to sing a song. All the promise that the Lord said will be fulfilled. And the greatest of all the promises is that soon our Savior, our Redeemer, and the Lord is asking us to tell you, to this family, that the illness is not going to lead to death, and that the Lord will operate salvation for the man, for the woman, and for the entire household. Our God is merciful. When we ask Hosanna, save us, the Lord comes and He saves and restores us and restores things to us. He delivers us and He acts in our behalf. And also the Lord has shown a man that is spent a period away from the Lord. And during the service, He understood that He needed to go back to the Lord, come closer to the Lord, and that's right. The Bible says that Emmanuel is God with us, and Christ in us is hope of glory and hope for eternity. And the multitude, they were singing, they were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna to the King, because Jesus today is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. I invite you to stand up and we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we we'll praise your name, Lord, because it's wonderful to be in your presence. Lord, I want to praise you because one day you removed us from this world and brought us into your presence. You have uh, approved us every day. You have one who has polished us, has built our lives towards eternity. We thank you, Lord, for a love which is unconditional. Unconditional. We thank you, Lord. We're not deserving, Lord, but you found in us. You found grace, and, and we praise you. Because by faith, we walk with you. Because you have has been holding our hand. You have guided us. You have strengthened our steps on the rock. And even when we can't, you are with us. You are the one, Lord, has made us open up our eyes in you know, order to see that eternal dwelling is waiting for us. And you have prepared, Lord, mansions uh, uh, in heaven for your church. And your church is, uh, is waiting for this day. That's what we say, Lord. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Blessed and exalted be your name, in the holy name of Jesus, and in the name of the Lord, the wonderful grace of the Lord, the Savior Jesus Christ, and the love of God, our eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, be with the, uh, the people of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen, my brethren. You may see it. Our service has come to an end, and you went and came with us. If you desire prayer and qualification regarding the, the gifts, Stay where you are, raise your hand, and we're going to give you the proper assistance. And now we invite you to be with us. We have service on Wednesday at 8, 8 p.m., Thursday at 8, Saturday at 7 p.m., and Sunday at 10.30 in the morning, Sunday school, and Sunday night at 7.30. You're invited to return to be with us more times. Amen. If you desire, please raise your hand. We'll pray for you.